Moses joining me on the desk. Now, this weekend, the Bobcats had a couple of different coaches behind their bench for inter squad games, and a couple of new cat personalities were behind the bench, including yep, yep. our very own Moses Moldu, which uh, would have been such an amazing experience to be able to do. You know, it wasn't too bad. You know, myself and Brandon Blazer, of course, from Lloyd FM, the morning show. Uh, we were part of the Bobcats Media Cup. It was it was a great time to be around. Of course, uh, a lot of media personalities involved, TV, radio, and print. Team Black taking on Team Orange. And, of course, those two handsome devils behind <laughs> Team Orange bench. There you go. First period, uh, Team Orange does get on the board. Ryan Swire from the circle gets enough to beat the netminder 1-0. Le less than a minute later, Team Black evens it up. Bryce Woodward, he'll be put it top corner. It's now 1-1. Now, a scary moment for Tanner Davey, Spencer Johnstone. Out of the box with the check, and Davies goes headfirst into the boards. He would leave the game with a concussion and did not return. Moving to the second, still tie. Team Black takes the lead. Nolan Uremchuk gets the kind bounce off the glass. It's now 2-1. Five minutes after that, a scramble in front of Team Orange's net, and Brayden Crone slots it home. 3-1 Team Black. Then Team Black makes it a three-goal lead. Crone to Parker Ward, 4-1 after 40. Now 5-1 in the third. Team Orange gets one back. Cole Porter snaps one home. Orange with some life. It's now 5-2. Midway through the frame. Orange striking again. River Beatty stops. Swire won't be denied on the rebound. His second of the game. That's as close as they would get, though. Team Black defeats Team Orange 5-3. Gary Van Herway has some tough decisions ahead when it comes to who will make the roster. As for the on-ice performance, the head coach is pleased. Game, lots of energy, and, you know, you've seen good... Uh, uh, periods of, of skill being shown and, and certainly they competed against each other and that's what it was all about. Okay, we may have lost, but we did have fun. And who also had fun? Well, the guys. We're talking about our coaching performance. What did you think of our fashion statements here today? Honestly, I enjoyed them a lot. I liked the pink, went very nice with the blue jeans. Very nice. I don't know what uh, were you guys, are you guys married? No, so that's what you're doing. You're looking for a woman in the stands. And I think you might have picked one up after looking how you guys did. Give it a nine for sure. It, uh, it's out there. Uh, you know, it's, but it looks good. Don't worry. Some kids in that black team, if the coaches, if the kids showed up like that, they wouldn't be playing. I'll tell you that right now. So there's no doubt about it. If we get into a fashion contest, I know which coaches are going to win. What did you think of us as coaches? What could have we done better to uh, had better success today? Ah, oh, the communication just really wasn't there, and I mean, I, all through the season, you guys have just been very lackadaisical, and you got to push us more. And that's a, that's a tough one. I think you guys, you know, you covered everything. Uh, maybe the only thing is, uh, you give us little pointers out there. Uh, you know, when we come off the ice, you know, could have just said like, me on that one goal there, I let in like, don't give them the puck. <laughs> And kind of blunt stuff like that, you know, little little pointers like that, you know. I think that's it, though. Eight minutes left, five on three. We didn't call a timeout. Should we have called a timeout there? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's no doubt in my mind. Maybe, I don't know, I know Google has some tips on coaching strategies and whatnot. And, that, I mean, you could have done that before the game. But, no, I was pretty disappointed in that call. Do you think that was a coaching blunder? That I think so, yeah. Because, uh, you know, we, we could have set up a play and probably scored a goal. And you have to give us a rating from 1 to 10 from our performance out there as coaches. What would you give us? Uh, I'll go give you an 8. 8's pretty fair, I think. I would give you a 3. Well, Mr. Bobcats wrapped up a grueling four days of camp. Now they finally get a chance to face some AJHL competition at the Civic Center when they face the Bonneville Pontiacs for a home and home set. The Ponts opened their camp last week and play their first preseason game on Saturday. Bonneville seems ready to go, but head coach Gary Van Herway says his team will accept the challenge. We're going up uh, against a team that's about seven to 10 days ahead of us into camp. So that'll be even a, a better test to see how we can react to a little bit more polished team. They got a good club and some good young local kids coming in there too. So it should be a battle. The club will see a mix of rookies, new acquisitions, and returnees in the lineup. Second year Bobcat Austin Uremchuk is eager to get back on the ice after a disappointing season a year ago. All us to really work hard this summer and train hard so that we can 
go for a nice run in the playoffs. And I think everyone that's back is eager to get going. As for Tyler Koontz, he will don the Bobcats uni for the first time this season after spending last year with Bonneville and Spruce Grove. When he was told about the move to Lloyd Minster, he got a good recommendation from a former Bobcat. I talked to uh, Casey Knight. Uh, I was actually part of the trade there, so I talked to him about it uh, first, and he said I, he, he loved it here. He told me I'd love it, so he kind of helped me along through it. And uh, So, yeah, it's, it's been good. Camp's been good also. And you can catch this game tonight at the Civic. Puck drop is set for 7.30. It's the most fun you could have on two wheels, and local motocross enthusiasts will now have another place to call their own. Kyle Gallagher checked out the new track and has more. Just the adrenaline, the adrenaline rush, there's nothing like it. Huh? The adrenaline, I guess. I don't know, it's just fun. It was mud, sweat, and gears as far as the eye could see. Hundreds of adrenaline junkies flocked to our area over the weekend as the new Lethal Racing Facility was the site of the final round of the ADRA Provincial Series. Had a pretty strong turnout for the first go around, I think, and uh, it's just going to grow from here. It was the first time riders hit the new track, and the weeks of prep work seems to have paid off. So far, the response has been really good. The riders have been loving it. While the track looks great now, Lethal Racing has even bigger plans for the facility. I mean, eventually, this is all going to be grassed over in the infield. Uh, we have a lot of amenities we'd like to add, like uh, completing our bathroom and shower trailer, and then also full-service campsites to be done. Hosting a national championship might even be in the works. I think that'd be great. It'd bring a lot of specta spectators to the sport and bring everyone around here together and really promote this track and lethal racing as the team itself. So how do some of the pro riders rank the track? Probably at the highest some big jumps and it's it's wide like me and Brad just got doing the, done doing the national thing across Canada is definitely worthy of holding the national here. It's awesome it's one of the funnest tracks I've rode uh, it's pretty uh, spectacular. Thing. Everyone's dream is always to have a track in their backyard and that's exactly what we have here. Kyle Gallagher, New Cap Sports.